Hey, hello, my dear YouTube friends. How are you doing today? I know I'm a little late. I'm sorry, but I hope you can forgive me. I hope you're doing well. Please let me know down in the comment field how you're doing and what are you working on today. So I am going to be working on my diamond painting. And if you hang on for a second, I will show you. I forgot to find this before. I usually find it. I'm sorry, did I just shove my face in your face? This. So this is the one that I'm working on today. It's Zodiac by Alphonse Mucha. And it is with square drills. It is a 70 by 93 centimeters. I love Alphonse Mucha. He do beautiful artwork. I am... I am working upside down right now, and I am about here. So yeah, you can see, yeah, around here. But yeah, it's a beautiful diamond painting. I love it. I am doing this for Summer with the Master. I know it hasn't started yet, but it is a big painting, so uh, I guess I need a little ahead you know to start a little earlier to hope to be done before the event is over so i just needed some more of this 3856 that is the color that it is the you know most used at least right now but yeah so this will be a ribbon chart and if you're new to diamond painting and you don't know what a whip and chat is, whip WIP stands for work in progress. And um, this is my work in progress. You can work on a diamond painting alongside me. You can knit, you can crochet, you can cross stitch. You can do any craft you want. You can also do chores around the house. You can go grocery shopping. You can basically do anything, even sit on your couch and treat this as a podcast so and chat chat means i'm gonna chat your ears off for a while okay okay so how are you guys doing again don't i, re I really do want to know i care about you guys a lot so um yeah i hope you're doing well i am a little late this week with my whip and chat usually they would be up by now but I got home quite late today. I was at a um, at the hospital in the third third biggest city in Denmark. It is called Odense, and um, they have a university hospital, which means that they do a lot of research. And when was that? I think the week before last. I discovered that they needed people to join in a research, research project. Well, there is two projects, really, about chronic pain and sleep. So I wrote to them and I was picked for not the project that I originally was thinking about, but the other project where you would get some exercises and stuff to do mental exercises if I remember correctly to do before going to bed for nine weeks and you have an, an app that you should use you know to log in every day twice a day and so I was over there talking to the nurse that oversees that project and while I was there we were talking about the other project and I was like so can you join in on both projects? Which you can, apparently. So um, I signed up for that project as well. Usually the the time over there would be about an hour, but because I, I decided to join both projects, um, I ended up being there almost an hour longer than originally planned. That's okay. I need to go over there again on Tuesday because for this second project, they need to do some earplugs for me. 
and you know they they will be made specially for me i can't talk a lot about them i can't show them on my channel because there's you know they're brand new still in production and they need to 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 copyright them so yeah they're still a secret but i will need to Usually she would, the nurse that I talked to also, she would do the, you know, make the mold that they're going to use to make these earplugs for me. But because I had ear issues as a child and had um, tubes in my ears, that can, apparently that can be seen at my... Um, eardrum as white spots something like that she explained to me and it makes it hard for her to see if my eardrum is punctured in any way so she wanted me to go to the the hearing and um, clinic next week so that they can make the mold so I have to go over there on Tuesday I don't mind at all I mean if I can help anybody in the future that has chronic pain with their sleep today i mean why not so i'm go going over there again on tuesday to get that mold done david has a vacation next week so hopefully he will join me and we can go from the hospital to ikea to buy some stuff that we need and to buy some stuff for my brother that he asked if I would buy. Originally, I would have gone today, had my dinner there, and then gone home. But that hour ruined my plans because apparently IKEA closes at seven, which doesn't make any sense to me. But okay. Um, so yeah, I was home. I was home late. It takes about fifty minutes or so from the hospital. Um, so I was in, in, sorry, I was in back in, in our town at around seven, but I needed to go buy some groceries. You were out of bread and I needed some, some food and stuff. So it was almost eight before I was home. And then I needed something to eat and stuff like that. And here we are, it is <laughs> 9.30 p.m. So I don't know if this will be an hour. I, I might end it a little earlier so I can get it up. But yeah, that was my day today. Um, but yeah, so David is at work. Tomorrow is a, a holiday here in Denmark. A, a church holiday. I can't remember. Do you have that one? Where's my phone? I guess you do. Hang on, I need to figure out what that holiday is called for you guys. And I can tell you. Um, hang on. And that is in English. Ah, yeah, Christ Ascension. That is tomorrow. So that is a holiday. A lot of people do take Friday off as well. And that way they get a four-day weekend. So David is off tomorrow. But he has to work again Friday. And um, sun, well, a weekend will be busy because Saturday... We're going to his, to visit his uncle and his girlfriend uh, in in Singapore. That is about an hour from here. So we're going down there, and uh, his siblings will be there as well. So yeah, and um, yeah, we'll be there from from around noon until eventually <laughs> david has to get up sunday he has a biking race 
up in the next town over that he wants to join. So I get Sunday off, as I usually call it. He's not home. I he'll be home eventually, of course, but I don't know when. I'll see. I'll see. And I have my live on Sunday, as always. So if you don't know, if you're new to my channel, I do a live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 10 a.m. Pacific Time. And all the other times you need to figure out because I never seem to remember which is Central and which is Mountain. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I know you will tell me and then I will forget again. I'm sorry. But yeah, I hope you will consider joining my lives. We usually... You know, it, it's a good time, and um, we are in the whole lot, which means that you as a viewer get a big say in what we're talking about. I usually have some things that I want to talk about, want to tell, but mostly my chit-chat is prompted by my viewers. So, yeah. So if you feel like you have something to ask or want to talk about a certain subject or something like that, join. It is a lot of fun. I love chatting with my subscribers. I would wish that we could somehow, you know, so everybody kind of, you know, kind of like a Zoom. So everybody is, is in there. We can talk, you know, real time. That would be a lot of fun. But um, I don't think that YouTube will ever have that feature. It's a shame, but I would love it. Yeah. Um, I would be trying to multi-place this or this big one, but apparently I get gapping in this one when I do. So I just, just do checkerboarding instead, which, I mean... It doesn't take a whole lot of time, really. I check a board with my tweezers, like you just saw, and then I fill it in with my pen, my single placer. Oh, I saw, was that in the VIP group? I saw somebody who felt kind of annoyed by that sound, the popping sound, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> How can you ever be annoyed by... The popping sound. And I just remembered. I totally forgot to to tell you what I'm working with here. This is my pen from Enablers Outpost. It has a Diamond Eye Club single placer up here with a glue dot in it. And down here I have a is that a three no, this is a Diamond Eye Club four placer with my own homemade scented putty in it. And then I have this one. This one is from North Alchemist. Isn't it beautiful? I love the colors. It has a regular single placer because I haven't changed it out yet with a glue dot in it. And up here I have a seven placer from Diamond Eye Club with my own homemade patty in it. Hmm? And here I have um, a Muni Made tray. I got this as a gift from a sweet, sweet subscriber called Francesca. She has a diamond painting company. I will link her down below and all the other stuff will be linked as well. I also use my trusted tweezers. Where did the other one go? Yeah, I have two pairs. These, the pink ombre ones from Diamond Art Club, I use these to place diamonds with because they're not pointy. They're perfect for placing drills. But if I need to remove a drill or something or remove something from my canvas, I use these non-branded ones that I got off a kit from AliExpress a long time ago. I have my my diamonds, my drills in these Elizabeth Elizabeth Ward knockoff containers. I love them. I only use two sizes. I use this one, it's a small. And I use these little ones, the extra smalls. In this, with the small one, I can fit an entire big bag um, from Diamond Art Club. So they hold a lot. And 
yeah, I, I prefer these, these two sizes. I never use anything else. And then I have, it holds, right now it is holding this little trash minder that is magnetic. This is from, from my friend Angie. She has a shop called Sparkle Addiction Art. It is an Etsy shop. And isn't it beautiful? I love it. The, uh, the minder, the trash minder has a magnet both underneath here and on this trinket tray. So it's stuck in, on the tray, you know, I can tip it whichever way I want. And if I don't have drills in it, I can usually flip it upside down and it will still stay. So yeah, go check out her Etsy shop. She has so many beautiful things. She also has, see, I have them right here so I can show you. Sorry, I bumped you. I just need to reach all the way over here. Um, she also makes these cute little hearts. You can use them for jewelry. You can use them for, you know, sometimes I have an issue with getting a lot of trash because I'm piggy with my diamonds. Um, she has those. She has made new hearts. She has made some that has a lower wall. So they are easier to ship for her and yeah, they, they, you can also put in your, um, you know, put in, in your putty or your wax or whatever. You can have it in here. I mostly have it up there on my trinket tray together with my tweezers and stuff. But yeah, that is what I'm using. Hang on. There you go. But yeah, that is what I'm using. I was... Totally forgot to tell you that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So where did I let off? I'm sorry, my memory is horrible. Again, if you've been here a while, you know that I lose track and I go down rabbit holes. And that happens all the time. But yeah, they're so beautiful, these these little hearts and Angie made me this is kind of a joke she made me a bigger trash tray you can see that this is the one that I got originally and uh, she made me a bigger one because she and my friend Berta and others as well by now tease me that I am a picky diamond painter that I always end up having a lot of trash because I'm picky and I am picky, but I just want my diamond paintings to look good. <laughs> I don't want, you know, tabs or holes, which is called cavities or something like that on, on my dwells. So, yeah. But I know other people don't mind that as much. I'm just, I'm a perfectionist. I can't help it. So yeah, um, oh, there was a drill, okay. Oh, and earlier today, before I left for, for Orlando for the hospital, um, David was out biking and he had a, a service, first time service for his new racing bike. So he had rode up there and he went, while he was waiting for, for the biking shop to do the service on his bike he was wandering around the, the shop and just looked at what they had and then he sent me a picture of the cutest bike for children hang on i'm gonna show you it was so cute and i was like oh that is adorable and then he came home and um he was like yeah Maybe that would be something for Rosa. Look, isn't it adorable? I have a glare. Isn't it cute? A Rosa bike for a Rosa girl, right? Okay. So it's like maybe maybe that would be something, you know, for Rosa's birthday. She will be four in, in June. And um, 
she I mean she shouldn't have got she should have gotten a bike a long time ago but she just got a bike a, a with with training wheels on that one is a cheap bike with you know and it is really made for kids younger than her so David and I was like well maybe maybe we could give her this one and yes it is cheap I mean if you want a a um a premium bike for kids you you will need to to pay money for it but we have the opportunity and we don't need anything i mean david and i have basically have what we need and and we have savings so yeah so i sent the picture to my brother and you, you know usually he goes yeah yeah so i told him well you know we were wondering if this could be a birthday present for rosa and and he was kind of stunned <laughs> it was like um he he was humbled because he was like well, um i i don't know it's an expensive gift and and he was you know touched he was like i'm i'm actually crying a little right now like you know uh, don't you I mean we we love you and we love rose and you're a single parent and i mean my finest job is to spoil i didn't have that that possibility back when my sister's kids were younger i i we didn't have you know that that extra that we have today and um i I want to help my brother I mean and in that also helping Rosa because my brother have a plan on you know when Rosa can get the bike and, and learns to to ride it with the training wheels of course safe he he wants you know to learn her to that she needs to learn how to ride in the traffic you know in Denmark we we do ride our bikes a lot where are a biking country and um, the younger the kids is when they learn how to behave out in traffic the better and my brother wants you know them to practice when they're going for a kindergarten and she got a cheap one from from my mom i think it was somebody dropped a bike off in front of their door and i'm guessing it was my mom but it is a cheap it wasn't really safe and it is for younger children so yeah so we might pick up my brother and rosa a day next week and then go to the biking shop and try out the bike we wouldn't just take rosa without confirming with my brother because you know you never know maybe he and and Rosa's mom had planned to to give her a bike for her birthday right so we didn't want to intrude on it but i mean yeah so hopefully we can go out there next week and uh see if if it's a fit the bike is sized the the it's a 16 inch wheel so therefore it says four to about six years of age which should fit perfectly since you will be four in in about a month so that's good and yeah i can't wait i hope she likes it i mean she she is like her aunt she loves pink red purple and blue so that is perfect <laughs> and um yeah she was here the other day and it was beautiful weather outside she was here monday as always and um it was beautiful weather so the cat was out in their catio and Rosa was out there a little with them and, you know, cuddling with them. And then she wanted out into the garden that, you know, wasn't 
in the enclosure. So we went outside and we have this little wooden bridge in our garden. So she wanted to play a children's word play that is about a, a an ogre and some um, goats that is walking over the bridge and the ogre wants to eat them. And then the first the first goat is like, no, 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 I'm just a little one, please. My brother comes next and he's much bigger than I. And then you go like that, you know. Um, so she wanted to play that a little and she was looking at the bushes and the flowers and we were talking about how we just got raspberry bushes and the blueberries are having so many flowers and um yeah we looked at the pear tree we looked at the cherry tree and the plum you know we i have always wanted to have an edible garden it has been a dream of mine for oh i don't know many years and now we have the possibility so we have we have strawberries what um forest strawberries in our front garden then we have we have a little bitty pear tree it's three years old this summer i think we've had it three years this summer then we have a very tiny tiny uh, cherry tree that is the same age then we have an old plum tree with the best plums on it i love it it hasn't given a whole lot of plums the past few years because we have been cutting it because it needed a serious cut trim but as we can see there will be plenty this year hopefully and then we have blueberries and we have the raspberries we just got and then I uh, we are talking about getting a a um a grape plant as well. Then I think it's about it. <laughs> we also do have a lot of flowers and stuff like that, but yeah. It's an edible garden that I have dreamed of. And mainly we're getting it because of Rosa and maybe other kids that will come visit, you know. Because there is something about being able to walk into your garden and grab whatever is ripe at that time. It's amazing. So yeah, I, I, I can't wait, you know, for everything to grow up so that there will be more. I mean, so that we will get pears enough that you can, you know, get to bring some home and, you know, take it to, to her kindergarten for them to eat the, the parents and, you know, they need to bring some bread and some fruit, uh, some fruit, <laughs> some fruit every week. Where does that come from? Fruits? Uh, it's from some movie. I can't remember where it is, but it's fun. Um, so yeah, so if I can, you know, have a lot of of plums this year, she can bring a bunch of them to her kindergarten. We will, if we get as many plums as we did the first year, we won't be able to eat a fraction of them. It's absolutely crazy. So we'll see what happens. We don't really have a lot of plans next week. I mean, Rosa will be here on Monday, and then I have that hospital visit <clears throat> on Tuesday. And other than that, we don't really have a lot of things to do. I have my knitting club on Thursday. Not here, but I'm going to my knitting club on Thursday. And then, I don't think we have anything next weekend, which is fine, you know, we do, we don't need to do uh, things all the time. I mean, we will be busy enough in June. We will have a lot to do. We will have 
three Saturdays in a row where we will be either having our own or be celebrating others' birthdays. First, it is our, sorry, first we're celebrating um, mine and David's and David's sister's birthday. So, and all together we're celebrating 145 years. So that is um, one Saturday. Then the next week, Rosa um, have her birthday party together with my brother. They're celebrating together. And then the week after, one of our friends celebrate his 50th birthday. So yeah, busy, busy month. And David also have a few biking arrangement that he needs to attend in June. So he will be busy. The air show that he was planning on going to has been cancelled due to lack of money. So they will be back next year. Well, they say they're po postponed it until next year, but you know. I mean, it's cancelled and they will be back next year. But that gives him a weekend in June where he actually doesn't have to do anything. And I, I think that is that is quite okay. I almost got stressed for his sake, you know, because he needed to do something all, all the time. But yeah. It's kind of nice that we don't have a lot of plans next week. We might be going, you know, take a day trip somewhere. We've been talking about doing that. And again, we talk about that every time he has a, a vacation and yet we never do. <laughs> because there's so much else that, that either needs to be done around here or we just relax, you know, to you know, have a staycation or something. It's kind of nice sometimes just to be able to wander around in, in your comfy clothes all day and do as you please. If the weather is nice, um, we can take a walk or David ride his bikes. He has two, so he will ride one of them. He has a gravel bike and then he has his um, race bike. So that is what we do. Oh, and in 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 what is that? Less than two weeks, I have my royal run arrangement. I won't be running. I can't run. Um, but I will be walking. Oh my God! Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, I will be walking five k. And um. <clears throat> Monday evening after I brought Rosa home, I sat our car because it needed to be serviced. I sat our car at the shop and then I walked home, but I took the long route home. So I almost walked 7K when I came home, which, I mean, I have about, I don't know. How far is it? I think about two and a half to three K from the shop to our house. If I took, you know, the straight way, the direct way, but I walked about seven K. It was beautiful. It was kind of annoying because it was too cold to not wear my jacket. And at the same time, it was too warm to wear my jacket. So, so I was feeling quite hot when I arrived home, but uh, I survived, and um, the the road that I took was quite hilly, so it was up and down and up and down. But the view was beautiful. I love it. The town that I live, the big town that we live nearby, and then out here, we have. Um, water all around oceans and stuff ocean um surrounding us 
and we have a fjord and stuff like that just next to us i will i will take you out to see the neighborhood one day um, i just need to to get a grip and do it but we we live beautifully out here surrounded by field and water and i mean if i took my bike i would just need to ride five minutes and i'll be at a beach and if i go into town the big town i will have i don't know many kilometers of beach and we have a harbor and we have um where where people's ships can can stay i mean we we do have a lot we have woods we have we have nature all over but yeah i mean we i it isn't you know within walking distance everything but i would if i were to show you the nature that we have i would need to to drive a bit but maybe i don't know maybe during the summer i would take you to visit some of the places take you to the beach that is in town and i will take you to the one of the beaches that we have out here we have several we also have some camping uh, spots nearby but yeah i mean we live beautifully here Denmark is Denmark is is nature rich because we're such a small country so we're surrounded by water only our border to Germany is the only you know part that is not surrounded by water but that is just a, a little strip everything else has water so we're lucky I mean I think the people that live the furthest away from water has about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour to drive. Then they will get to, to the ocean. So that's, you know, that is not very far compared to uh, most of you who live in the U.S. that has, I don't know, to drive days <laughs> to get to the ocean. Um, but we're very lucky, I know that. I sometimes take it for granted, which I feel bad about because I know that we're extremely blessed to live in this small country. That is, I don't know, it's a beautiful country, really. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. I could hear one of our cats was sick out there, so I had to go take care of it. But I'm trying to think. I mean, not a lot. I don't really have a whole lot to tell, I think. Well, I could just talk and talk and talk, but you know, that's just empty oh by the way when i was at the hospital today he because it is a study studies about pain and sleep you needed you know to to tell them about your life with pain and how long you've had it and the severity and how it affects your sleep and stuff like that so they were asking you know where my pain stemmed from so I told them that I was born with Klippelfeil syndrome and they both looked at me like, huh? <laughs> which, <laughs> which is usually what happens when I say the, the name of my syndrome. So I had to explain a little and I had to spell it because none of them knew the, the, the name of it. So yeah, <laughs> I found that kind of funny that they never heard of it before, which I don't, I'm, I'm, it, it's not something that I expect people to know. Whenever I'm telling people, you know, I have Clipper Fails syndrome, I'm like, pretty sure you never heard about that one. 
No, no. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah, so I explained a little and you know, they were like, so how many years have you been in pain? I'm like, well, always. I mean, I think always. I can't remember not being in pain. I, I remember, you know, from from a young age, around six or seven, maybe even before that, I told my parents I had pain in my neck. And I was, they, they were telling me that I was just seeking attention because of my brother had asthma. So nobody did anything about it, which sucks, but I can't change that. So, you know, I'm living with it and yeah. <laughs> but I found that a little funny. I mean, it is kind of funny whenever I, I get to tell people, professional medic, medical people, you know, about what I have and then they know nothing about it. That, that is kind of funny to me. I mean, here sits those, one of them was a professor, you know, and, and he still was like, huh? <laughs> he didn't say that, but you could, you know, you, you know, when you can see people's eyes they were like okay i have no idea what you're talking about but okay <laughs> that was kind of the, the look he had but i mean i mean how many people are in denmark right now about six million i think and we are about 150 with my diagnosis with my syndrome so i mean it isn't it isn't a whole lot maybe one more by now maybe something closer to 200 I don't know one in every 42,000 is born with it so it's it's rare but yeah I think I'm about at the end of this this ribbon chat like I said, I wanted to make it a little shorter in order for me to get it up ASAP. But yeah, I'm I'm glad that you chose to watch this and I would appreciate it a whole lot if you will give my video a thumbs up on your way out. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you and it is, uh, yeah. I would love to have you as a subscriber and if you're back I'm glad that you were here I'm glad that you were watching my video and I hope to see you all on Sunday in my live and uh, until then until my next video bye everybody bye love you